everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I have something very special for you, uh, something a little near to the heart for me. This is the Desert Tech Wolverine. It is the third generation bullpup from Desert Tech. Uh, it is replacing the MDR and MDRX family of rifles. For those of you who followed me for very long, you know that I have fallen far down the rabbit hole of bullpups, particularly those uh, made by Desert Tech because I love their multi-caliber capabilities, the accuracy that they provide, as well as the compact size and the easy maneuverability of this kind of rifle. If you don't know anything about the Wolverine, let's get into some of the very basic uh, features of the rifle. This is a multi-caliber rifle. It has the ability to change from uh, small frame to large frame calibers. So you can use 223, 300 Blackout, 65 Creedmoor, 308. Uh, hopefully there's some other ones that we'll see soon. Personally, I have a little soft spot for the six millimeter arc. Today in this video, we're going to go over some of those different caliber options for the Wolverine. Uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of modularity this rifle provides uh, at the moment you can see it is a 16 inch 308 so that's a 16 inch barrel from here to here basically uh, and it's kept chambered in 308 right now we have some other options as well like this is a 20 inch uh, 223 barrel uses the wieldy chamber uh, we also have a 20 inch 308 barrel that we're going to shoot in this a 20 inch 65 creedmoor that we'll put in here and show you guys how that works. And of course, a 16 inch 223 barrel as well. So all these options can be swapped in and out of the rifle in just a moment. I'll show you that here in a minute. In addition to the multi-caliber capabilities of the rifle, you'll notice that since it's a bullpup, it is a very compact rifle. All of the action and uh, bolt parts are in the back of the rifle instead of up front. The magazine is behind the trigger and so forth. This makes the overall package very, very small. It's also got some other additional features such as ambidextrous controls. Uh, you'll notice that the charging handles here are available on both sides of the rifle. So whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you can use the rifle. You've got uh, safety and magazine uh, release on both sides of the trigger guard right here as well as a third magazine release back here in front of the mag well so that you can uh, use the different options however you see fit. Um, the rifle can be swapped from right to left hand eject so you'll see uh, the ejection port here can be removed and swapped to the other side of the rifle followed by taking the bolt carrier out flipping the bolt over uh, to the opposite side of the rifle and then it will eject out the left side of the rifle. So uh, with ambidextrous controls as well as ambidextrous ejecting options you can shoot this rifle right-handed or left-handed. For the purposes of today's testing I've got a primary arms GLX 3 to 18 rifle scope mounted on here. Uh, I've used a few other scopes as well trying to see what I like best. I really like this one but uh, for different setups and different uh, purposes. I've got other optics that I've also used on the rifle so uh, we'll try a few different things and see what we like best. Since I've been a big fan of Desert Tech's bolt rifles and semi-auto rifles for some time I was really excited to get hands on this thing and see exactly how it works and what it what new things it brings to the table compared to the older rifle the MDRX which I also love. Uh, one of my favorite rifles that I use quite frequently as well. That was hot. That's hot. That is really hot. Speaking of the MDRX, let's talk about the differences between the MDRX and the Wolverine. Uh, the MDRX used an aluminum extruded receiver that used several bolt-in steel parts that went uh, into the receiver and used little screws and fasteners to hold it in place. Uh, the uh, rails that the bolt carrier rides in as well as the barrel block and a few other parts were all bolted into that receiver. The difference with the Wolverine is that all those parts have been removed and now the Wolverine receiver is one piece of aluminum, uh, a solid extrusion that is completely machined with all those parts built into the receiver. So not only did we lose all the steel, we lost all the fasteners as well as the complicated manner in which they are all attached to the receiver. In addition to those changes, the Wolverine also incorporated a larger barrel trunnion that is machined into the receiver. 
For those that are familiar with the MDRX, it used a steel block that was bolted into the receiver that would clamp the barrel around the barrel extension and the shank of the barrel here. So the MDRX would clamp around it with a steel block that used two screws and would clamp down and hold the barrel in place. The Wolverine has lost that steel barrel block and now the Trunnion is aluminum machined into the receiver, all part of the same uh, piece. And in addition to getting rid of that block, uh, Desert Tech has made the Trunnion much longer so there is a larger area clamping onto the barrel, whereas before it might've been, you know, like this. Now with the Wolverine, it has a larger surface area clamping down on the barrel shank. This obviously allows for better engagement of the rifle to the receiver. It also has a larger surface area, which is going to translate to uh, a more accurate rifle because it's holding it better in the uh, receiver. There are some other changes as well that have been incorporated into the Wolverine. Uh, there have been some changes done to the magazine catch, some of the uh, geometry on some of those parts, as well as the trigger pack and those things. Things that have been improved to make the rifle function better than its predecessor. Since the Wolverine does not utilize the forward ejecting feature that the MDRX had, the bolt carrier has been changed as well, uh, taking a few uh, pieces out that weren't necessary for because the loss of the forward eject and it's added a little bit of weight to the bolt carry which I think helps make the uh, operation of the rifle a little bit smoother as well. Also because of the loss of the forward eject feature the rifle is a lot simpler. Um, the forward ejecting parts that the MDRX used uh, are not in this rifle so there's a lot less things to go wrong in the event that you had a problem and uh, that also helped drop the weight of the rifle. Speaking of weight, this rifle is a full pound lighter than the MDRX, according to Desert Tech, and uh, you can immediately feel the difference when you pick this rifle up compared to an MDRX of the same uh, configuration, which is extremely nice. Some of the things that have stayed the same with the Wolverine that uh, came from the MDRX rifle is all of the calibers come with a six position adjustable gas valve. That allows you to customize the operation of the rifle depending on ammunition, suppressor use, and uh, other things like that, which is a very nice feature. It allows you to customize the operation of the rifle and make it really soft shooting and uh, also maintain that reliability that everybody's looking for. Uh, the piston is different on the Wolverine. It uses a flat, uh, a blunt piston to impact the uh, operating rod inside the receiver. That allows the rifle to have two flat surfaces so when the piston pushes on the op rod there's no uh, you know deflecting of the barrel under operation of the rifle. Um, the idea behind that was to make the rifle more accurate by not having uh, barrel whip induced from the piston striking on the op rod. So those flat surfaces are a little different which hopefully is going to uh, show up in our accuracy testing while we're shooting this rifle. Another added benefit of losing the forward eject uh, feature of the MDRX, the Wolverine uses less overall gas to operate because it doesn't have to um, incorporate uh, inertia for those other systems of the rifle. So the overall gas needed to, to operate this rifle is lower and that has resulted in a softer shooting rifle, which is nice. Because the rifle is lighter, You'll also sometimes, depending on caliber, feel a slight difference in recoil. For example, uh, the MDR weighing a full pound more, you probably feel a little less of the recoil on the larger caliber, like 308, for example. You'll probably feel less recoil because the gun's heavier. So by going to a lighter rifle, you're probably going to feel that recoil just a smidge more. So there's, there's pros and cons to both ways, I guess you could say. As far as shooting the Wolverine, um, the trigger feels very similar to the MDRX. Uh, probably a little bit better if I had to if I had to say one way or the other. But the MDRX trigger I liked quite a bit anyway, so I'm I'm used to it. It's not a sniper rifle per se, so I don't expect it to be, you know, the world's greatest trigger. The operation, of course, is the same. Uh, you've got your charging handles that uh, are non-reciprocating. They lock forward uh, when you're shooting. So I'll take this magazine out. The charging handles lock forward and there's a little spring that holds them up in place so they don't uh, reciprocate while you're shooting. So the charging handles will stay forward while you're shooting and if you want to lock the bolt back you simply uh, pull the bolt handles or charging handle up 
locked when you're at the rear and they lock in place. And then you can just slap it and they go forward as well. Uh, the charging handles, because of that little detent at the front, you do have to pull down and back when you're running the charging handles. A lot of people, uh, when I hand them the rifle, they start yanking on it and they don't realize you gotta pull down and back. And then if you want them to stay up, stay back, you just simply lift up and let go and they stay back. Or if you wanna just load the rifle, you can pull back and let go and you're ready to shoot. I've shot this rifle now in three different calibers. Uh, the 300 Blackout is not yet available, uh, but I have shot it in the 5.56 or 223, whatever you want to call it. The, the chambers are 223 Wildy, which allows you to use a great variety of ammunition. I've used the 16 and 20 inch 223 barrels, the 20 inch 308, the 16 inch 308 that you see here, as well as the 20 inch 65 Creedmoor. For accuracy testing with uh, many of these barrels, I've got a wide assortment of ammunition. I used some of Desert Tech's own match ammunition, which prov provided some good results. I also used, uh, for the 223 stuff, I used a bunch of PMC bronze, just the 55 grain FMJs. I also used some PMC match, as well as some federal gold metal match uh, for accuracy testing to see how the rifle performs. In addition to that, I've also tested in the 6.5 Creedmoor with the Desert Tech match, some federal gold metal match, some Hornady 140 grain match. Uh, those also performed well and got some great accuracy results. Most of the testing I'm doing, uh, as you can see, I've got the black label uh, handguard on the rifle with the built-in bipod. This is the 16 inch version, which uh, is really nice if you are using a 16 inch barrel. As you can see, this bipod just folds up neatly into the handguard. Gotta loosen the clutch. So that bipod folds right up into the rifle, so it's out of the way completely uh, seamless here so you've got all kinds of uh, smooth handguard to hold on to or if you want to add down grips or any other accessories you can on the M-Lock slots. So this is the 16 inch version of the handguard which is uh, really nice but I like the 20 inch version a little better because I like running 20 inch barrels sometimes. This is the longer 20 inch version that you would use with one of these longer barrels. Same thing, it has the built-in legs, uh, carbon fiber, extensions there and uh, it's really handy because it it's built in the rubber you don't even know it's there until you need it uh, and it's very handy gives you something to shoot off of when you want to shoot something a little bit more accurate uh, when you're not shooting prone uh, the bipod also has a built-in um, cant ability so you can level your rifle while you're shooting and you've got a little tension clutch on top that will lock it up uh, when you don't want it to move anymore so uh, anyways, that is the handguard that uh, I'm using on the rifle today. These are really handy. They allow you to shoot well. Um, they're not cheap, but in my opinion, they're worth every penny. During the course of testing, uh, I've used quite a few different magazines in the rifle just to see how they work. Uh, this is a 10 round P mag. There's also 20 round P mags for the 308 and 6.5. I've also used some uh, um, steel mags. I think, what's this one? This is just one of those uh, C products, uh, metal 20 round 308 mags, 20 round P mags, 30 round uh, metal GI mags. Uh, everything I've used so far works great. Uh, can't wait to get a six arc mag in this thing. My initial accuracy reports with the rifle have been quite positive. An average five shot group from the 16 inch barrel was giving me around three quarters of an inch uh, accuracy. I'll show some more results here uh, that you guys can see um, accuracy from the 16 inch 223 barrel as well as accuracy from the 20 inch 223 barrel. The 6.5 Creedmoor also produced fantastic results. I was able to shoot like five three quarter MOA five shot groups in a row, which is was quite impressive. Now granted, uh, that was with a suppressor on. These rifles for me, in my experience, have always shot better with a suppressor on, uh, regardless of caliber. I think it helps settle down the rifle, it adds a little weight. It's way better. If you live in one of those commie states that doesn't allow it, um, I don't know, we'll pray for you, I guess. Just a little infant, so cuddly, mm. but still omnipotent. As far as suppressors, um, I've used quite a few different suppressors on the rifle. Uh, this is my Yankee Hill Machine Turbo uh, 5.56 suppressor. I've used this all over my MDR as well as the Wolverine. 
uh, fantastic little suppressor, works great with the gun. Uh, we've also got an OSS, excuse me, OSS, Huxworks. Huxworks, yeah, Huxworks, not OSS. So this is the uh, Huxworks Helix 30 cal. Uh, we use this one quite a bit with the 308 and the 65 as well. I also used a Guardian Defense um, 30 caliber uh, suppressor on the 308 and 65. The Wolverine, like the MDRX before it, makes an excellent suppressor host. I would strongly recommend you get a suppressor and run it on this rifle. It's well worth your time. For the sake of those who are going to ask, I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert this rifle from one caliber to another. As you might imagine, if you are going from a caliber uh, with similar bolt head size, uh, that you don't have to change the bolt. So if you're going from 308 to 65, uh, you don't need to change anything other than the barrel, which makes it very convenient. If you're going to change the rifle from a large frame to a small frame caliber, uh, the only things you're going to have to change are the magwell, mag catch, and the bolt, uh, if I remember correctly. I think that's everything. If not, read the notes. So to start out, we are going to show you how this is done. So right now, as I mentioned, this is a 16-inch 308. So what we're going to do first, obviously, we'll check the, the gun to make sure it's safe before we do anything. And then we're going to use two tools here. This is a T25 Torx driver, and this is a 5 millimeter. Uh, Allen key on a torque wrench. Um, you can get these anywhere on the internet. Um, these are real handy and make these caliber changes very simple. So to start out, we are going to uh, lock the bolt back, as you see there. And then there are two screws on the side of the handguard. So I'm just gonna loosen those. You don't have to take them out. As a matter of fact, don't take them out. You'll be angry if you do because it makes it a real pain in the butt to put them back together. Then there's a takedown pin. You'll see right here on the bottom of the handguard. Once you pull that pin out and loosen those two screws, the handguard comes right off. So there's the handguard off. Now we're gonna use our torque wrench. And on the side of the rifle here, you see there's four screws there, four or five millimeter screws. One of those is the barrel lock. Um, the barrel lock should only be used when the barrel tension screws, which are the other three, uh, are loose. So the three screws that are in line are the barrel tension screws and the fourth one is the barrel lock. So we're gonna start out by just loosening those three barrel tension screws. So you just loosen them up a little bit. This is very similar to the MDR. Uh, if you have ever done a caliber change in the MDRX, this will be a breeze because it's pretty much the exact same process. So you loosen those three screws out so that they're just loose. Once those are loose, then you can rotate your barrel lock to the unlocked position. So you rotate it 180 degrees. Uh, it has detents in both positions. So right now it's unlocked. Now it's locked. I don't know if you can hear that click, but... Nice. Okay, so that's the unlocked position. Once the barrel's unlocked and those three screws are loose with the bolt lock to the back, the barrel just pulls right out. So there's our, th our 16 inch 308 barrel. Now, if I want to change this to a 6.5 Creedmoor, I take my 6.5 Creedmoor barrel. This is a 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. You slide it into the chassis and then um, you turn your barrel lock back to the locked position. So the barrel lock not only is uh, there to lock the barrel in, it also holds the barrel in the right place for when you uh, type, torque it down. So make sure you do the barrel lock before you tension those other screws down. Uh, I'll repeat it again because it's worth repeating. The barrel lock should only be rotated while these screws are loose. Sometimes if you try and rotate it while they're tight, um, it, there's a, there could be a little misalignment and it's possible to cause some damage to the internal parts. So make sure you only do the barrel lock while those tension screws are loose. So me personally, I like to close the bolt after uh, putting the barrel in and then with the barrel lock uh, in place and the bolt closed, I torque these down. This little torque wrench just clicks when it hits the 80 inch pounds. As you can see there, so there, now our barrel is torqued in, the uh, barrel lock is locked, and our bolt is closed. So before I do anything more, I always like to run the bolt and make sure everything works properly before I go any further, which it appears to be. And now we're gonna put on our 20 inch handguard. So we'll slide that over the barrel and seat it down into the receiver, push the push pin through, and then torque down the screws on the side of the handguard. Now, 
we have a 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to go from one caliber to another when you don't have to change the other parts. Now, do we have to change the other parts? Let's get into that next. So if we want to change from a large frame caliber like this 6.5 Creedmoor to a small frame caliber like this uh, 20 inch 223 barrel, uh, we're gonna have to do a few more parts because obviously there's different internals. So again, we'll do the same process we did before. Uh, we'll remove our handguard by loosening our two screws, punching out the screw, uh, the takedown pin, slide this guy off, and then we'll pull out our barrel in the same fashion, loosen our tension screws, rotate our barrel lock 180 degrees, pull the bolt back, and out comes the barrel. Now, I could just go ahead and drop my barrel in and uh, reattach it, but first, before I do that, I'm gonna show you the internals of the caliber change stuff. So, first thing I'm gonna do is let the bolt come back forward, uh, and then I'm going to separate the upper and lower receivers. This is done by taking out one, two, three takedown pins. So we'll just push those out. And the last one here at the back. So with those takedown pins out, we've separated the receiver from uh, the stock panel or lower uh, for all you AR people out there. <clears throat> In here you can see some of the uh, differences from the MDRX and the Wolverine. You can see that the barrel trunnion is machined into the receiver. Um, so that's a handy little thing to see while we've got it open and the feed ramps are not part of the barrel block like they were on the MDRX. These are steel feed ramps that are bolted into the bottom of it. So pulling out the bolt carrier is easy as grabbing this thing. Uh, we call it a beaver tail, but this thing here. This is the bolt carrier assembly for the rifle. Uh, another change you'll find between the MDRX and the Wolverine, the Wolverine utilizes a cotter pin to hold the, the firing pin in, almost identical to the uh, AR-15. So you pull that cotter pin out and it allows you to pull the firing pin out, which then allows you to take out the cam pin and then the bolt. Very similar to the AR-15 for those that are familiar. Um, on the lower receiver, or stock panel as it is often called. Um, there are very few differences between the MDRX and the Wolverine, but the differences are important. Uh, the differences, the main differences are in the magazine catch. Uh, the magazine catch slightly different, which uh, has been made to improve the feel of the uh, magazine release. Obviously, if we are going to change from a 308 sized magazine to a 556 sized magazine, we are gonna have to change the mag well, because this, this won't do. So, your 223 conversion kits are going to come with a new magwell as well as a new magazine catch. So the magazine catch is mounted on a dovetail. Let me grab the right one here. So your magazine catch is mounted on a dovetail. So what we do here is, using a tool, you push this magazine catch out of the receiver and rotate it up like that and then you can just use your tool and just pry up like this and the 308 magazine catch will slide right off like that then you can get your 223 magazine catch and slide it on I like to give it a little standby once you slide that on I like to give it a little tap with my tool because it's got a little snap detent then again you just push in on the screw from the opposite side and rotate that down. Now I don't want to put it in yet because I still have to put in my magazine well adapter. So this is just a plastic magazine well adapter. It has a slave um, bolt stop built into it. So this, you just rotate it into the lower receiver. I like to put the front end in first and then you just push it in until it snaps. Real easy. Then we can reseat our magazine catch. So. Sometimes you gotta give it a little bit of a wiggle to get it to seat properly, but once it's in there, you are ready to go. So now you can put your 223 sized magazines into the Wolverine. So there you go. That's, that's all you have to do on the lower receiver portion of the rifle. 
So once we've got that done, all we have to do is change out the bolt. That is done, as I mentioned, just like an AR by removing the um, cutter pin that holds in the firing pin. Pull that guy out. Once that cutter pin is out, you can pull your firing pin out the back. Once the firing pin's out, you can rotate the cam pin 180 degrees, or excuse me, 90 degrees. Don't rotate it 100, it's 180, it won't come out. Pull our cam pin out, and then your bolt comes out the front. So there's our 308 slash 65 Creedmoor bolt. Now we take our 223 sized bolt, uh, and we'll stick that guy in there right here. Now we want this thing ejecting out the right side, so your extractor on the right side of the bolt carrier. If you wanted to make it come out the left side of the rifle, you would flip it to the opposite side of the bolt carrier. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on the right side because I'm not wrong-handed. And then we can put our cam pin back in. Rotate it 90 degrees. Install our firing pin in the back. And reinstall the cutter pin. All right, that, that's done now. So now we have our 223 sized bolt in the bolt carrier. So I'm gonna show you real quick while we got the gun apart. Uh, these screws here hold on the ejection ports. If you were changing from right to left hand, you could flop the bolt over like I just showed you. Then you remove this, uh, this screw. It's a Torx T15 Torx screw. You take these screws out and swap these from one side to the other and then put the gun back together and you're ready to go. I'm going to put my bolt carrier back in. This uh, operod guide uh, needs to go over these two rails, these two little rails sticking out on the receiver. And then we put our bolt carrier back in, push it all the way forward. We're good to go. Now I can add my lower receiver back to the upper. When I put MDR and Wolverine rifles back together, I always like to do it like this. When you're putting it together, grab this, push down on the, on the recoil pad and pull. So I'm pulling it this way, push down and pull. Pin goes in easy every time. That works good on MDRs or Wolverines, so you know. So put my takedown pins back together. Uh, now we've got this uh, assembly back together. Now I'm gonna put my 20 inch 223 barrel in here. Drop it in. And then I can, again, close my barrel lock with the screws loose. Then I will torque them down with my 80 inch pound torque wrench. Turn it till it clicks and not passed. Okay, barrel's in. Slide our 20 inch handguard back over it. Put the push pin through at the bottom. We torque down our screws. I don't know that there's a torque spec on those, but it's about right there. And there you have it. Now, it's a 20 inch 223, which is what I'm going to shoot next. That's how you do caliber conversions on the Wolverine. Uh, we changed out our magwell, our bolt, so now we can use our 5.56 or 223 magazines in the rifle, make sure everything works good. Our bolt catch back here, just like your MDRX, that's a very handy feature. A lot of people don't uh, realize how handy it is. Um, one of the nice things I like about this rifle when you're shooting it is, when the gun goes empty, the bolt's going to lock to the rear, as you see there. The mag drops out, you grab your next mag, you can stab it in, and then in the same motion, so you can see right here, in the same motion as you seat the magazine, you drop the bolt. 308, 16 inch Wolverine. Let's see that bolt release in action. In the process of shooting this rifle for accuracy, I found a fantastic feature that the Wolverine has inherited from not the MDRX, but actually from the SRS and HTI rifles made by Desert Tech. Uh, the barrel clamping design of the Wolverine is much more like the SRS and HTI rifles than it is the, uh, the MDRX, uh, in that it clamps a larger surface of the barrel uh, and holds it better in the rifle. One of the added side effects besides accuracy is also the ability to return to zero, which is a fantastic feature. Um, for guys like me who are always switching around these things, that means I can pull, I, if I zero this gun right now with this barrel in it, and then, you know, I can have it dead zeroed and then pull this barrel out, put in my 308 barrel and go shoot that. Uh, 
then when I take that 308 barrel out and put this barrel back in, it is still zeroed. I don't have to re-zero the gun. And that's going to be the same uh, across different barrels. Let's talk about comparisons. Um, I've had the good fortune to shoot a lot of MDR and MDRX rifles, as well as Wolverines. I've also been able to shoot um, AUGs, RDBs, RFBs, uh, X95s, a lot of different bullpups uh, similar to this. Um, there's something to like about them all. Uh, I really, really like the Wolverine because of the weight over the MDRX. One of the problems a lot of people had with the MDRX was the weight. They were saying, oh, the X95 is lighter. Or maybe they did, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, the AUG's lighter, the, you know, these other rifles are lighter. Um, now that the Wolverine weighs a, pound, a full pound less, it makes it a lot easier to shoot. It's a lot easier to point. Um, that reduction in weight has been very nice. Um, and that makes, in my opinion, makes it a lot better competitor to those other rifles. Accuracy wise, in my experience, the AUG has never been particularly accurate for me. That doesn't mean there isn't one out there that shoots good. Um, the RDB has shot well for me as far as accuracy is concerned. The X95, not so much. I think this one wins because you've got better accuracy, you've got comparable weight, uh, you've got much better controls than most of those others. As much as I do like the RDB, I think it's kind of hideous compared to this. This thing's just dead sexy, in my opinion. Function-wise, I think by losing the forward eject, there's nothing to complain about as far as um, reliability is concerned. It does the exact same thing the other rifles do. So for a little recap, I'm gonna go over all the things that I think makes this rifle uh, very nice and exceptional. Um, st let's start from the front. It is an excellent suppressor host. Um, I always shoot these things suppressed. If you don't, I'm sorry, but uh, excellent suppressor host with the adjustable gas system, you can make it run uh, really soft and very nice and reliable. It's just a, a joy to shoot. Um, accessories like this uh, black label handguard also make the rifle very handy. They also make those for other rifles too, so that's not necessarily a Wolverine leg up, but having that possibility, um, is is very nice um, the handguard there uh, the ambidextrous controls are nice I personally don't care that much for ambidextrous because I only shoot right-handed uh, but for those of you out there who are lefties you're gonna love having that option as well uh, the trigger is fantastic I like the trigger I mean comparing it to um, a lot of the other bullpups I think it is superior by far uh, the safety just like the MDRX, um, nothing, nothing fancy. It's just a fire and safe, you know, uh, very simple. Uh, the charging handle is non-reciprocating. That's nice. Um, the multi-caliber portion of the rifle is probably one of the biggest draws for me because I love the modularity and the ability to set this up. If I want to make it 6.5 Creedmoor and take it up here to go deer hunting, I will. If I want to drop in a 16 inch uh, 223 to go to the range and do some, you know, steel targets inside a couple hundred yards and just have fun with friends i can do that or i can throw in my 20 inch 223 and go hunt prairie dogs with it you know i mean there's all kinds of options with this rifle uh, as i mentioned the return to zero capabilities uh, of the wolverine over the mdrx are fantastic and potentially in my opinion worth replacing an mdrx with a wolverine but that's just me uh, it's that big of a deal to me I suppose you could say I would like to have uh, AR compatible grips on it. A lot of people uh, join me uh, in that um, opinion, just because it'd be nice to change out the grip for something maybe you prefer over this one. Well, for me, it's not a big deal. Um, for some people it is, but it would be nice to be able to change that. Also, in my opinion, these black label hand guards are so superior, um, in my opinion, I think they should might as well be a factory option because they're just too nice to to not have in my opinion so in closing um let me say a few more things about the wolverine i guess uh what it comes down to is this if you are even slightly interested in a bullpup rifle 
um, you would do yourself a disservice to not at least try one of these before you buy any other rifle. I think um, this thing does everything a bullpup rifle can do and it does it well. Um, so definitely if you're even considering buying a bullpup rifle, uh, get behind one of these first because you're probably going to change your mind. I'm biased. I'll admit it. I'm biased. Other than that, the only thing left for me to do with this rifle is long-term testing. And with my own rifle uh, going to be here in my hands shortly, uh, it won't be long until I can start down that process and uh, do some long-term durability testing. I've probably put four or 500 rounds in various calibers through this rifle. That's pretty much it, guys, on the Wolverine. Um, I would love to answer any questions. Feel free to comment below. I'm always in the comments. I'll be happy to answer your questions um, and uh, get you any answers that I can. Um, I'm going to be doing more stuff with this rifle in the very near future, so follow me if you don't already, uh, and you'll see a lot more information about this rifle and a lot more shooting of this rifle as well as more results with it. So again, really appreciate you guys watching the video. Really appreciate uh, your support. Um, you can read more about this rifle on my website. That's coldboremiracle.com. You can head over there and uh, read more about this as well as many other firearms uh, and uh, accessories to go with it. I'd love to see you over there. I think that's about it. So I am going to go take this thing out here and see if I can maybe score me a squirrel or two with it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.